Hi you guys, I'm back for a post Lionsgate energy check-in. I actually pulled these cards on Monday and I just didn't get a chance to record it yet. I was triggered Monday night and I cried for like 24 hours and now I'm back on my feet and ready to resume. So, um, and also, I'm sorry, I've been a little MIA and um, for my, some of my clients have been waiting for readings as well. The energy fluctuations between June and July definitely got to me at different points in time. I've had other triggers going on and I also, honestly, I have life going on. I mean, I'm a single mom. I, um, I work another job, actually. I, I work another job, but I have my business, I have a job, and I help my mom out and she pays me for it. So I have multiple things going on <laughs> and I had stuff come up that just, you know, made me take longer and I do apologize doing the best that I can to work through, to do collective readings and to work through my orders and not keep people waiting a long time, but I'm only one person and reading strain a lot of energy <laughs> and um you have to be in the right energy to do readings and to do energy healing as well and um and you know just so that everybody knows especially if i have clients watching this um like i really do push myself as hard as i can to to get my orders done but and i push myself to the point of burnout sometimes, but I have to take care of myself sometimes. So please have understanding of that. I mean, I think most of my clients do say, um, I'll get it when I'm meant to get it, which is 100% true. I mean, I have a client beginning of last week, I wanna say, who received her reading and she it was later than anticipated, but it was right on time as far as divine timing goes. Like literally she got news the same day about spiritual warfare on her journey and her case that her reading like perfectly matched up with that information. Um, and, and I pulled the reading before she got the news. So spirit aligns that. And that's something that we need to take into consideration with readings that spirit sometimes aligns when you receive them for a reason. I also have seen that, or not seen, but I also feel that sometimes there's also a reason for having to wait because of spirit teaching you patience, to be honest. Like, I don't know about other readers. I know I've heard that some um, have significant weights as well like a month or whatever um and you know the twin flame journey it, this is a marathon this is not a sprint it's not likely to have significant changes in that short of a time frame short that short of time frame being a month or less it can particularly for those who are very close to union but for the majority of people, there's not gonna be huge differences in that amount of time. And the journey, like part of, actually one of the most significant lessons for feminines during the journey is patience. So I really would not be surprised if part of what Spirit is doing with that, with readers who have long lists, um, is teaching you patience. I, I really believe that to be honest um, but yeah so the other thing to take into consideration is like my readings are extensive there my twin flame readings are 30 to 45 minutes and my twin flame Akashic readings are more like 60 to 90 minutes and I'm adding I'm gonna be adding more listings this week to include like astrology and some other add-ons and those are gonna be even longer I'm sure so um like you that takes time for me to do it takes time for me to pull the cards and it takes time for me to to record the reading and channel the messages and there's just only so much time in the day so um, i am so grateful for all of my clients and i have some amazing clients 
but um, please have understanding that it doing readings it uses up double the energy of what a normal job does and I'm a single mom and I'm one person and I work through it as best I can but um but know that I, I feel it's gonna be worth it <laughs> I've only ever had good feedback from clients and um and it all comes in divine timing so that being said let's look at the lion's gate energy check-in I am Working on getting all cut up on my orders. Last week was a really difficult week with my normal job, um, which is I'm a, a color guard director. Um, so if anybody knows what that is, I had band camp week last week. So I had a 50 hour week with my color guard. So I had much less time for orders. Um, but now I'm focused on getting caught up between this week and next week. Um, I should be able to get majority this week. More recent orders will probably be next week. And then I want to stay on a regular pattern with the collective readings. I think it's probably usually gonna be with the new moon, full moons, to be honest. So let me show you to this week's um, spread because as we know now, since May, Spirit is like creating a different spread each time I do a collective reading. So let's have a look at the spread. Let me adjust. Loosen. Okay, there we go. But I don't want it to like fall on me like it did the first time. But you guys, did you guys see that? I mean, it was hilarious because Spirit literally like brought the stand down to balance it for me. I was cracking up um there you go trying to get it all without losing any so I think you can see it for the most part let me raise it up a little bit there you go and I'll have the picture also so there's this week's spread let me put this down Oh, hold on. There we go. And get it set up. Okay. Okay, I have to tell you guys, the very first card that flew out of the deck, I started with the, um, what's it called again? Oracle of the Seven Energies um, to assess the energies of the connections right now. And... While I was shuffling, I asked Spirit, what is the energy coming out of the Lion's Gate portal for the Twin Flame Collective? And I swear to God, this is the card. This card flew out while I was shuffling. I had not even pulled a card yet. And I cracked up laughing. I, I cracked up laughing. Like Spirit has such a sense of humor sometimes. It cracks me up. So asking about I literally had just said the words lion's gate portal too just said those words and the lion waking the lion flies out so waking the lion clearly this is about um I still check the book on this deck it's still too new to me to know the cards without checking it but the waking the lion card is about um well it's a solar plexus card and it's about stepping into your power fully so any twins and honestly this can be divine masculines or divine feminines any twins who are needing to fully step into their power they are um they're in the process of doing so the Lionsgate portal is helping them 100 step into their power and strength in order to have the courage to move forward whether or not they know the way um, they can face difficulties and painful situations and, and face the unknown and have the courage and boldness to do, to do so. So anybody who is needing that extra boost of energy, Spirit is assisting them with that right now from the Lionsgate portal energy. So going to the first card position, this is past energy that is um, still influencing 
excuse me, that is still influencing the present. And this is ears wide open and it is a throat chakra card. So, this is a positive. So right now, um, this is past energy still influencing the present. Um, I'm gonna say either side because I did not specify if it was divine masculine or divine feminine. So either side, depending on the situation and the connection is very much still attuned to understanding the other person's needs and in the process of, or I feel like it could be at varied stages of in the process of silencing the ego and allowing the heart center to lead and paying attention to the other person's um, needs and and um, having empathy for them. Being able to see the other person's perspective more. Purposeful listening. So anybody who is in communication, they are having um, purposeful open listening um, as respect and intimacy are growing. This is a space of receptivity for each other and hearing each other's needs and wants and desires and being able to make positive changes moving forward with that. So that is super positive. Okay, so the next two, um, two cards came out here and it's the present energy. You see those? Yeah, okay. Um, we have smoke and mirrors and willing release. I thought that was an interesting combination just from the titles. Smoke and mirrors is a third eye chakra card. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. It says seeing through the lens of past conditioning. Healing from misguided perceptions. Moving beyond the illusion of separation. Being accountable for your biases and the way you view the world. So to me, this is about tremendous spiritual growth as far as being able to see the bigger picture, being able to understand the connection, being able to understand separation more and why it exists and move beyond that. As well as if we go back into the lower chakras, um, well, let's actually, do we know how, I, I assume that I say this most, I say it in almost all of my personal readings. I can't remember if I say it in my collective readings, but, um, the twin flame journey is about before it's about the relationship. It's about stripping away all of the conditioning layered on top of us so that we can come back to our true authentic selves. And that's exactly what this is talking about. It's about seeing past all of the illusions of the conditioning that has been ingrained in us all our lives and past lives. So this is a very positive for all of this spiritual growth and uncovering our true authentic selves. And willing release, I mean, that automatically sounds like it goes along with that, releasing the old and releasing the conditioning. This is a crown chakra card as well, <laughs> and it means yielding to a divine plan, releasing attachment to form, especially if something isn't what you expected or wanted and leaving room for serendipity. So it's, it's surrendering and it's letting go and it's allowing things to unfold how they need to, allowing spirit to be in control because the truth is that spirit is in control of the twin flame journey. Um, soul will overrides free will for twin flames and Spirit coordinates your journey exactly how it needs to be from beginning to end. Um, spirit being not just your spirit guides, but your own higher selves, your own souls are coordinating your twin flame journey. So when you are struggling through something really difficult, it's important to understand that it's all happening for a reason, guided by your own higher selves in order to teach you the lessons that you need to learn and in order to align where you are meant to be in your lives. So um, 
there is a divine plan for each of us. I just happened to glance down and I could, this sentence caught my eye, so now I need to read. <laughs> there is a divine plan for each of us. When acting on this faith, you may find that your intense desire for something translates into a feeling of attachment and entitlement. Right now, can you immerse yourself in this experience and allow the divine plan to unfold as it will on your behalf without interference? Can you be open to receiving what is yours even if it is not packaged in the form you thought you wanted? Perhaps if you look deeper, you will see that you've received the perfect vibrational match to your most authentic wants and needs. That is like exactly what twin flames need to hear. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so this is the present energy in these. This is really positive. So far, this is really positive for where you guys, where twin flames are at. That was bothering me. <laughs> um, okay, next is hidden influences. And we have earth magic, and this is a root chakra card. So root chakra is affecting Affecting the union path here and it is about being strongly grounded um, which is a, a very another very positive thing so actually like what you're seeing here with the previous two cards is that your base is, that's like grounding in the higher chakras and now this is grounding in the lower chakras Trust that the seeds you've planted in your field of dreams are in good hands. The earth is a conscious divine source of love that is doing its part on your behalf. Trust that what you are intending is being nourished and is growing. There will be plenty of time later to tend to your garden to water it and weed it. Great magic is germinating underground, working its way to the surface to deliver more blessings than you could imagine. That's beautiful. I had to read further because there was such an emphasis on the earth as well. Um, and I was looking for the deeper message there. But that, I mean, the combination of these messages right now is already blowing me away. Because these cards, since I don't know them as well yet, you know, I pull them and I don't know what they mean. So now, like, we're all discovering this together, and I am just blown away right now. The obstacles. Now, this is definitely, these cards I know better because these have been more um, repetitive in readings. And these are referring to the um, past hurts and wounds. I don't know why I said hurts. The past wounds and difficulties that are that have been in the process of being worked through so they're still holding on a little bit they're still not quite ready to let go and they're still causing a little bit of obstacles so exposed and revealed oops i read that backwards <laughs> i read the number backwards because it's upside down um okay so that is solar plexus and exposed and revealed i see it two ways for one thing in karmic situations, truths are coming out. They are being exposed and revealed for divine masculines or divine feminines to see because there can, karm there can be karmic relationships on both sides. Let's remember that. Um, but exposed and revealed also means, and it more so means, that it's about healing shame and letting go of limiting beliefs that have been holding you back. So letting go of self-condemnation, freedom from past unresolved wounds, focusing on self-worth and the underlying beauty and rejection. So this is about learning the lessons that need to be learned and releasing the wounds connected to them and releasing the limiting beliefs that we've been harboring all our lives. Um, and a lot of that does go along with karmic situations. That's another reason why they are connected, but they can go way deeper than that too. And then the time machine is a root chakra card. And this is about, honestly, how I just said, how wounds can go so much deeper. It's about inherited patterns, that conditioning that we have been, um, that we've grown up with and that have come through from past lives as well. It's about lessons being learned and processing them 
but not allowing them to trap us anymore. So the combination of these cards is saying that we are healing those wounds, we're processing them, we're releasing the conditioning and um, learning the lessons and not allowing them to trap us anymore. So that's super positive as well, actually, even though they're in the obstacle position. Next we have, um, it's like hidden helpers, I think it's called. It's like, how what is spirit helping with, basically? So the divine matrix is a crown chakra card. And it means... It's understanding the knowledge that we are all divine beings and part of a greater tapestry. We are weaving our dreams into the fabric of reality, creating synchronicity, or spirit is creating synchronicity for us, and learning to trust the way things unfold because of how, how we are living in this divine matrix realm of the spirit. Hmm. Again, a sentence has caught my eye. Imagine that everything possible under the sun is waiting to be claimed. You are not separate from what you desire to manifest. Everything is intrinsically connected within a vast living web of life, a divine matrix. Even that which you have not yet observed as part of your life experience is still connected to you. It remains dormant until you choose it. Interesting. Oh my gosh, excuse me. As you thread your luminous life force, your courageous dream is part of the tapestry of life. You're being invited to be conscious of the pattern you are weaving. Very interesting. So, so being in this position, spirit is helping you, us to understand the way our 3D lives are interwoven with spirit and how spirit and the divine realm um, are all interacting together to create our lives and to bring our dreams into reality. So this is more about the spiritual growth and really bringing in more awareness and understanding to us to understand um, how we create our lives and how we live them and how it all comes together and including the twin flame journey which the twin flame journey is a significant part of that and then seeing beyond is a third eye chakra card i'm loving all of these third eye and crown chakra cards so this one means having the capacity to see beyond the material and beyond the obvious beyond the 3d um getting out of your own way and discarding your projected outcomes, having vision. So as you are recognizing the greater picture of life and how it's all coming to be, you are then also um, getting out of your head, getting out of your own way, opening up to allowing your intuition and your third eye to lead, removing those um, projected outcomes as it referred to. And there was another phrase earlier that I've already forgotten. Um, but focusing on seeing the greater vision beyond our 3D world. So this is what spirit is assisting with right now. And again, I am just blown away by how beautiful this is. The actions to be taken are opening to discovery. And this is a throat chakra card. And this is about um, integrating. This is opening to discovery of your true authentic self, your 5D. This is integrating your 5D aspects and your soul self and your higher self into your human, into your 3D and integrating the two together. Again, allowing your third, um, allowing your intuition, I should say, to lead and opening yourself up to all of the synchronicities um, and signs and messages and everything from the spiritual realm as well into your 3D world. Integrating all of that into one, opening up to discovery to all of that as well. 
And it's also spirit asking you to be open to inf the information that is coming to you through the spiritual means. And now the outcome. I swear I am really blown away. This is a completely different energy reading from what I have had before for clients or collective readings. So this is, uh, this feels very first wave to me because of the extent of the spiritual growth and I, and it, it's so beautiful to me. I'm blown away by the, by the amazing growth and achievement y'all are making and what this lion's gate is bringing you. So the outcome is bearing fruit. This is a sacral chakra card. And well, honestly, I mean, it's pretty clear without me looking it up, but this is about abundance. This is about reaping your harvest. And what it says here is birthing the results of your hard work. Um, I don't even need to say more than that. This is a powerful and fertile season of your life. Everything coming together, birthing this brand new chapter for yourself. This is like the Empress card. And then I always get additional cards at the very end. And we have the Royal You with Into Me I See. I do know Into Me I See, so I'm going to save it because it's special. Um, the Royal You, I've had this one a few times. You'd think I would remember it by now. It's solar plexus, and this is this is actually in alignment with that um, waking the lion card. It's stepping into your sovereignty, having a com complete confidence, knowing who you truly are now, being completely self-aware, and not allowing any other outside influences to knock you out of alignment with your soul truth anymore. So, I mean, I see a very complete outcome here. It's like reaping the harvest of all your hard work after stepping fully into your power and not allowing anyone else to influence you anymore and coming into union. Into Me I See is a sacral chakra card that liter that is specifically about intimacy, dropping your shields with another and allowing yourself to be vulnerable and open up to a deeper connection with someone else in an intimate relationship. So, and coming into union, I, I mean, I don't think that this reading so far can get any better. I really don't. This is beautiful. Okay. Um, now with the angel tarot cards, I asked what's going on with the feminines. Feminines are focused. Am I in the right spot here? Can you see it? Okay. Feminines are focused on their material world and their success and their confidence in themselves and their contentment independently. They are still, they're not giving up on their twins. They're not giving up on their dreams. They're not giving up on their dreams. They know everything is in the process of coming together. And in the meantime, they are focused on themselves. So first of all, 999. Nines are like tens are numbers of completion. Nines are that like last step before. So I love seeing all the nines. The triple nine also means um, about being in alignment with your with your life purpose and your soul truths. Um, and it's about uh, earth, fi earth, fire, and water. Um, or earth, material world, fire, like passions and water like emotions so focused on their material world and their um, happiness and stability there not giving up like I said having the passion to like stand by their their knowing that everything is coming together and they are going to get everything that they want and desire with union good job feminines masculines they have extra cards here for the masculines um First, we have eight of earth with 10 of air. So masculines are working hard at bringing these difficult situations to an ending. And in this case, difficult situations can either be, actually, let me put it this way. 
Difficult situations can either be karmic situations or it can just be the separations. It doesn't have to be karmic situations anymore. Um, it can be, um, you know, even after karmic situations end, the, the divine masculine still might need to align certain things in their lives to be ready for union. So they are working hard at doing whatever is necessary in order to bring these difficult separations um, with their divine feminines to an end. And of course, like I just said, tens are numbers of completion. So that's super positive. Um, they are focused on communication. I keep putting this too low. <laughs> They're focused on communication. They're getting into their strength to be able to have the conversations that they need to have. Now, these can be these can be conversations with their feminines or with karmics because we also have here the queen of air and the queen of air can be about breakups and separations and divorces, not from, not separations from twins, but from the karmics. So the king, this is the king of air. So they are getting into their power and confidence and strength to be able to have important conversations. Now with the page of air, page of air means super honest communication. So this can be both communicating with their divine feminines about their situations and how they feel. And just like that vulnerability um, and honesty can be scary to them. And it's also, or like depending on each twin situation, like it doesn't have to be um, a both or an also, it can be an either or, just you know, take it into consideration. Um, ending, having the difficult conversations to end karmic situations as needed as well. <clears throat> and then lastly, with the masculines, they are focused on getting into their, into their king of water energy in order to open up to their feminines Tell them how they truly feel, what they truly want, and and open up to union and open up to anchoring these connections into twin flame union. Four of fire is also twin flame union. So actually, yeah, the king of water is preparing to open up emotionally to his queen and to bring in twin flame union. And then <laughs> union energy is literally union energy like union card union card and you had the union card from the masculine side so when these came out and came out together i was like whoa <laughs> and i didn't even know the whole energy oracle side yet um so i i love this the union energy is that unions are happening baby and they if they're not already happening for you um well i shouldn't say for you because it depends on which wave you're in but unions are happening and more unions are coming, particularly for the first wave. But I don't want to say mutually ex exclusive either. Now, I will say I have clients who are um, in the process of reunion. I am in the process of reunion. Um, and I know others that are very, very close as well. So this does not surprise me. And I do believe it's just going to continue. Um I think I will actually go to the sacred forest real quick. So I asked for from the sacred forest um, what the energy is or just what information from the sacred forest right now for um, the lot pertaining to the lion's gate. First we have, I hope you guys can see it okay. I know it's a little bit far away. Um, unicorn purity. I actually have to look at this one because it's not really descriptive enough there for me. <clears throat> so this is seeing the world and seeing your journey through new eyes, through innocence. So I see this as not, not looking at your twin with the frustration and anger and negativity from the separations and from the past and the mistakes that they've made and all of this stuff. It's it's beginning anew, starting fresh, starting over again, and um, giving them a chance 
releasing all of that, it's opening up to that unconditional love that allows you to do that as well. This is a purification and renewal in the connection so that you are also then opening yourselves up to miracles. Yeah. Okay, and then we have, I love these two together, power and transmutation. I mean, that speaks volumes on its own, to be honest. Um, twins, particularly divine masculines, are stepping into their power. I really don't think that there's much more that needs to go along with that. Stepping into the power, taking charge of their lives, speaking their truths, releasing limiting beliefs, releasing fears over misusing their gifts. That's very interesting. Recognizing, both of you are recognizing your spiritual power and your ability to heal others without um, misusing them in negative ways. And then with transmutation, I know that this one's a beautiful <clears throat> meaning. I mean, this is, this is like transformation, transmutation and transformation are very similar. I mean, look, it's the Phoenix. And look, I love we have the dragon and the Phoenix together here too. Um, the Phoenix is legendary for his transmutation and fire. In the flames, he is reborn, leaving behind his old and tired self to become a passionate, wild, and free bird. Something that you might have thought would never change is changing into something amazing. It's not an ending, but it's a new beginning. Situations that seemed lackluster are transmuting into fabulous opportunities, release expectations, and limited thinking for things are not as they seem. So twins who are coming into all of their power are going through this transmutation process to transform their lives and to move into this new beginning with the twin flame journey. And then lastly, we have Spirit Guardians of Summer, which is all about expansion. And um, this is about, I mean, expansion. So your lives are expanding. Um, you're moving, you're setting, you're being reborn. You're setting out into new beginnings and your lives are expanding excuse me vitality health success abundance healing and passion are expanding in your life this is the energy of working with passion in the direction of your dreams and that's really like all there is to it all that you even need to say about it so there you go <laughs> um Looking at the Akashic Records, I asked, what do twins need to know right now with the Lionsgate portal? Bam. Both of these cards mean wishes fulfilled. And Crescent Moon like has a different name, but they both mean the same thing. It's wishes fulfilled. It's, um, it's abundance coming in. It's increase in prosperity and success and happiness overall. I mean, I don't need to say anything else. It's reaping the rewards of all your hard work. So, I mean, this message is even more repetitive here than what I thought. <laughs> okay, two decks left. I'm going to go to the dragons now. I love the dragon deck. I want everybody to love the dragon deck. First, we have the air and water dragon. This one takes longer for me to find, though, because they are not... Um, in any particular order, to be honest. Okay, the air and water dragon call, oh, helps you connect to higher frequencies. Call on your blue and green air and water dragon to enter your third eye to awaken and activate your higher fifth dimensional abilities. This will bring you crystal clear clarity and new vision and awareness of your life. Your third eye is a very sensitive psychic center, and when it is fifth dimensional, the air and water dragons clarify and protect it and enhance your ability to use it for the highest good. They then enable you to connect to Neptune, the planet of higher spirituality, to open to new enlightened understanding. This card calls you to use your intuition as well as your spiritual knowledge and wisdom to see everything from an illum illum illumined, I don't know how to say that word, perspective. 
<laughs> air and water dragons will then surround you and enable your life to flow. They will attune you so that your voice expresses the true notes of your soul. Then next, we have the aquamarine dragon from Neptune. How funny is that? Since they just referred to Neptune. This is a, hold on, I'm about to do it. Not quite there yet. Seventh dimensional dragon enables you to access your deepest soul wisdom. Aquamarine dragons from Neptune are water dragons. They will flow around you, surrounding you with their aquamarine energy and awakening your psychic abilities. Connect with them often for each time you do so, they will light up more of the keys and codes of your true essence. This will bring your soul contentment and a sense of your divine magnificence and you will experience higher levels of enlightenment and see your world and the universe through different eyes. Your guidance is to drink a glass of blessed water as you tune into these dragons. They Then they will be able to touch you more profoundly. By the way, I don't think I said this. I asked which dragons are working with the twins right now. And then we have the golden Atlantean dragon, which I love because twins were together in union in Atlantis and now um, we have this reference to Atlantis as well that's like validation why can I not find this dragon golden Atlantean dragon where are you no really I cannot find it Oh my gosh, there it is. Also a seventh dimensional dragon. And helps you remember the wisdom of Golden Atlantis. That makes sense since Twin Flames were together in Union in Atlantis. And I don't know if all Twin Flames were, but I wouldn't be surprised. So now we are at a point in time where, where we Twin Flames are being reconnected with their past lifetimes in Atlantis and to remember it and to restore it. This card invites you to activate your own personal fifth dimensional blueprint for it contains the light of the incredible era of golden Atlantis. The golden Atlantean dragon who has come to you now worked directly with all the great masters of Atlantis during the Halcyon days and remembers exactly who you truly are. Prepare to reclaim your mastery. You are ready to dissolve the final veils of amnesia and your dragon will assist you to do so. Ask it to breathe its golden fire into your third eye so that the final clearance and awakening can take place. Your dragon will then remain with you and shine light into you as you prepare to stand in your power as an Atlantean master. Beautiful. And lastly, and I know that this card has come out before, so I, I and it's perfect for twins as well, so I think it's also amazing. Dusky pink dragon from Andromeda that prepares all your chakras to embody higher love. And does that not sound like exactly what twin flames are supposed to do? Embody higher love. Also a seventh dimensional dragon. You are ready for higher love. The dusky pink dragons from Andromeda are suggesting it is time for you to carry this luminous light in all your spiritual energy centers. Touch your stellar gateway, soul star, causal, crown, third eye, throat, heart, excuse me, solar plexus, navel, sacral, base, and earth star chakras in turn, breathing in dusky pink and affirming, I accept and, and radiate higher love. As you do so, have a sense of these dragons breathing pink into all your chakras. You become a flame of ineffable pink love. Be aware you now have the power to touch everyone you meet with the flame of spiritual love. Know that when you work with the dusky pink dragons from Andromeda, you can make a huge difference to the ascension of the planet, which is exactly what twin flames are meant to do. And even these cards are like pointing to reaching um, the different higher stages of, um, of the twin flame journey process. So now lastly, we have the White Light Oracle, and let's start with Queen of Nagas. Number five. A sacred task exists for you to fulfill. 
It is to be found through connection to your heart. Be open only to those most authentic teachings which prove helpful to your continued spiritual progress and personal freedom. Cleansing your body, mind, heart, and soul will be of particular benefit at this time. Powerful, subtle energies are helping ensure your success. Believe that many positive synchronicities and unexpected allies will rally to support you. I mean, that really goes along with the bigger process here as well. Okay, I wasn't going to read past the initial messages, but wait, let's see here. It says there's two messages with this card. The first is that as you maintain your integrity and take your emotional healing journey, you are placing yourself within a powerful field of spiritual protection. Continue to tend to your inner healing and ask for spiritual protection each day from the higher beings you love. And wait. Okay, and the second message is something of great value is at work in your world. Spirit works with tremendous subtlety even when it is accomplishing a masterful stroke of luminous inspiration and powerful grace. You may not be fully aware of the divine protection being granted or of a negativity that was averted, yet you are being held in grace nonetheless. Hmm, that's good to know. I don't think that it's 100% true all the time, but for the most part, twin flames are protected, yes. Sometimes they require more protection. But anyway, okay. Vulva of Cedar. Your inner spiritual power can heal circumstances in your life and our world in ways greater than you realize. Journey within to gain clarity and conscious redirection of your inner energies toward what you wish to manifest. Do not try to control what is happening. Instead, work to bring positive influence to bear so that you may contribute constructively toward shaping the outcome for the greater good. When we choose to align our actions with our heart truths, we become the spiritual birth mothers and founding fathers of a more spiritually advanced humanity. And here we go again with exactly what twin flames are here to do. <laughs> okay, Aurora of Gamma. It is time to let go of what has been. You are swiftly outgrowing your past. Explore and commit to a spiritual practice that supports your personal transformation so that you can cross the threshold before you now. Embrace your freedom to be creative in your approach rather than doggedly committing yourself to your previous ideas or plans. You have the spiritual intelligence necessary to evolve. Continue your healing journey with trust that a positive outcome is imminent. This card indicates a shift into a new cycle, but also the growing presence of the light within, which is the creative light of spirit. Tuning into that light opens up options for living soulfully, away from the grip of ignorance, no longer constantly ensnared by the compelling, but ultimately fraudulent conjurations of ego. Her new era is an inner transformation with positive external consequences. Trust in what your inner light is manifesting in your heart and in our world. Oh my gosh, again, might as well be a description of the Twin Flame journey. And lastly, we have Sacrament of Extreme Unction, which comes out very frequently, to be honest. Um, so it's a recurring theme for many twins. Your heart knows how to let go so you can find peace. It is time for you to experience spiritual closure. A beautiful new reality is opening up for you. Entering it requires you to release your attachment to the past. You have been inwardly preparing for a powerful rebirth. Now is the time to trust in what is meant for you and move toward it with an open, trusting heart and peaceful mind.
Embrace your future and let go of the emotional and psychological burdens you have been carrying for yourself and likely for many others, ancestors and more, for far too long. The universe is offering you a powerful spiritual gift. It is time to start anew. It is time to be happy and free. That sounds a lot like union, doesn't it? So I think that the messages here today have, were extremely consistent and very beautiful. And this is an exciting time for, for definitely for first wave um, and possibly more. And this energy from Lionsgate is, is quite beautiful. So I think that Lionsgate is going to, is in the process of initiating major positive shifts and changes for many twins right now. And even if you aren't first wave and you're at the point of union yet, these are still going to be very positive shifts in your twin flame pathway forward. And the first waivers are just getting the ball rolling for everybody coming behind them. So um, I think this is a very positive sign. Um, let me know if you have any questions and you can always book a personal reading in my shop, my Etsy shop. And there's a variety of readings there. Right now there is, like literally right now, there is two different types of twin flame readings. But I am actually going to add, hopefully this week if I get a chance, one with astrology alone and then a more a comprehensive one that includes astrology and Akashic. And I'm going to add some other um, readings as well. I'm going to be adding an energy check-in that's like separate, um, that's probably a, a little bit shorter than the Twin Flame ones, like just like a quick look at your divine counterpart. Um, I'm going to be adding a pendulum reading so that you can ask more specific questions. Um, a separate astrology only reading. I'm redefining my soul path reading. So like there's going to be a separate one for career work more questions and then a soul path life purpose one to really help you figure out um, what is meant for you. And some uh, I have some other ideas too. I have them all written down. I just can't remember it all right now. So check those out soon. And um, I also have a Patreon set up if you didn't already know that. I need to actually make a more formal announcement about it. But for my Patreon, there's group tiers where like you're going to be like your own collective that I'll do special readings and events for um, and group healings and stuff like that. And then there's also mentorship tiers for one-on-one -on -one coaching and readings and Reiki. And, um, and I'm forgetting something. Oh, and there's also a couple options there for anybody regulars that I have who like to order um, month after month then you can just set it up through patreon that way to make it easier so I think that's everything oh I had a workshop last month for soul clearing and DNA activation um, we recorded the workshop and the recording is available to purchase so that you will still <coughs> excuse me you will still receive the same clearings and DNA activations from watching it so that is available in my Etsy shop as well and also please check out my podcast interview with Lauren Smith of the master your mind business and life I think I said those in the right order <laughs> podcast that I actually have that um have that links linked in my link tree as well as posted in my IGTV and my YouTube so I think I covered everything um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Have a great day.